Welcome back to Ratavah 79's 3.5 World Building Campaign, Episode 4. Did I just kill a friendly? You're about to find out. Enjoy. And you missed oh, yeah. that a lot. Roll me a percentile. Oh, boy. You're really good at that. Yeah. <laughs> Roll your damage. All right. Daryl with the scar drops. There's Daryl with the tooth. All right, Daryl with the tooth then. Okay, yeah, because Daryl with the scar is the archer. He's been the one back here shooting. Yep. This turn. He misses. Uh, Kagan, you are now at negative two. Darwin, right. Junior. Yep. Yeah. God bless America. I'm gonna shoot at him with that bow I got. I'm. It's still a plus zero. So, oh my goodness, Mouse, you're gonna piss me the fuck off. Oh, that's right. Whammy. What's the damage on that? One d eight. Yep, and that kills the last goblin. Still an initiative round because people are dying. You get there. On to drink. Oh, shit. <clears throat> so I walk over, see him laying there beaten and battered. I uh, stick my glaive in the ground. You know, after scanning, seeing the, the goblins are dispatched. Kind of roll him over and uh, start checking out his wounds. Hollering for the Daryls. Uh, pretty sure I've seen the third fix a broken nose or maybe done something. And a couple of bars. I don't really know how to help him all too well, but at least try to stabilize him, get his broken armor away from him. Check, you know, if there's any, like, major bleeding, start to put something on it. I know that much. All right, go ahead and roll me a heal or a first aid. Who, me? Uh, yeah, you. Well, you try your best. All right, Daryl, you're able to... Oh, it's Daryl. <laughs> um... Jason, on your turn, you move over there and uh, try to stabilize him, and you stabilize him. He is at zero. So he is, un so he is unconscious, but he is not bleeding out anymore. That would take us to Pam. Yeah, I'm going to go uh, start to loot the bodies. <laughs> All right, I'll deal with you in a minute. You, 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 Goblins? Yeah. I mean, I, I can't do anything about killing people, so. Okay. All right, that takes us out of initiative now. Um, Josh, the Daryl that you run over to help dies in your arms. Ain't that a bitch. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you, oh, you got there? You bandaged him, but it wasn't a, was there was no use. I want to take a vial of his blood then as it's dripping out without anybody seeing. Okay, roll me a sleight of hand. Well no, you could just do it because there's all this chaos. Yeah. The other Daryl that's barely holding on to life goes to the back of their wagon where Bob, the dwarf, and the uh uh, one of the Daryl, the the third Daryl, and the son have all been sleeping, and he's like pounding and shaking the wagon, like "Wake the fuck up! I need the box! I need the box!" Yeah, I what's totally in the box? What what's in the box? What's in the fucking box? <laughs> what's in the box? Bob finally wakes up. They're all fucking deep ass sleepers. Sees him all beat up and bloody and shit. And fucking goes, oh, fuck. And he starts digging around inside of the wagon, digging around inside of the wagon. Oh, I only drew two. There's supposed to be three. Um, and he pulls out a big lockbox. And he's got the key that he wears around his neck. And he opens it up. And he pulls out healing potions. And he passes them out to everyone that's hurt. Pam, off of the one goblin you got to before shit happened, like people started talking and stuff. You got 10 gold, a short sword, and a short bow. 
I put it in, I put the short sword and the short bow in our cart and uh, tied it with uh, Darwin's bedroll. Okay. I go to. Um, hold on, hold on. Before we get into looting all the bodies, um, everyone, if you've taken any injuries, you drink one of these potions, cure 1d8 plus 3. And I'm assuming somebody's pouring one down Cargan's throat. Yeah, I'll do that because I just have a feeling that if Drake tries to do it, he's going to like drown them. And I'll be nice enough if it doesn't feel like it helps anybody out enough. I will share mine because I feel like I don't need it or I'm just going to pocket it. All so right. Cargan gets four back. All right. So that answers that question. Go ahead, Cargan. Roll Josh, in. Drink yeah. There we go. I got six back. Cool. I am at zero wounds now. D8 plus three, so. And uh, yeah, Bob gladly shares the potions with everyone that was hurt. The one Daryl gets two potions to heal back up. And the two Daryls that are left go about burying the third Daryl. We lost do the I get a heal do, Hey, do I get a healing potion? Did you take damage? No. But how? But I. But I could be <laughs> like. Hey, Are I you trying to fake taking damage? That you yeah. took damage. Yes. Roll a bluff. And try to explain why you're there now. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> yeah, I'm it's like it. you just fucking appear. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, I'm wounded. Give me potion. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh my god. <laughs> Bob screams. Holy hell! Where the hell do you come from? I have cramps. Help me, I hurt. He's looking around all over the place. Where the... Who are... Were you with the goblins? Came... No, she just came out of the woods. She helped kill a couple of the goblins. I did. I was here. I heard you screaming. But you didn't hear the screaming, and you were here the whole time, too. Yo, she came out of the woods, and uh, she helped us. She actually killed uh, two of the goblins. Oh, thank. Well, that that's mighty kind of you. Here, here, here you go. And he hands you a, a potion. And he's, like, looking at uh, the bard, like, he's following his cue, but looking at you suspiciously, like, where the fuck this person come from? I don't know what's going on here. My cousin just died. All right, what is the, what did he, did he give me the a healing potion? Yeah, Josh, you said yeah, you searched one of the bodies because you were by the dead one, so you yeah. got you got ten gold, a short sword, and a short bow. That leaves the last one to you, Drake. Ten gold, a short bow, and a short sword. The dwarven woman starts pi piling up the goblin bodies to burn them while the Daryl's buried. And this happened on second watch, so everyone's like, well, fuck, my sleep schedule's screwed up now. So it's about, like, what? How many rounds is that? Is eight rounds? So it's about, like, one, two in the morning still? Yep. Um, well, shit, I say we, uh, maybe kind of pack up and head down and see if we can get we got a dead guy with us. I'm not too keen on just chilling here with the dead guy with us. They might want to take him to the somewhere and have him buried. No, they're burying oh, they're him right now. Oh, they're burying him, him right now? Oh, okay. Yeah, they're that. burying him right um, now. The dwarven woman and the child are stacking up the goblin bodies. The two living Daryls are burying the third. And Bob's making sure that all of their cargo is secured. Okay. Cool. Um, Keeping a suspicious eye on the halfling. I go pet the goat. Make sure he's fed. I'll help <coughs> them bury Daryl since he died in my arms. I'll use my press digitation to help him move like bigger rocks to set up on his his body and all that. You make a nice little Karen. Yeah. 
very sweet of you. Are people going to try to go back to sleep or are you going to try to push out? I mean, if we're not pushing Yeah, I was on, a little skirmish. I'm going back to sleep. Yeah, I'd, I'd go back to sleep too. How long into second watch was that? Uh, midway. All right. I already know my little brother is going to go back to sleep. I'll kind of like, as <coughs> shitty as it is, be half asleep. Finish out my watch. <clears throat> Third watch goes off without a hitch. Cool. Towards the end of my watch, I'll start breaking down camp so that way when everybody gets up, they don't really have to do a lot. I'll leave stuff to make like coffee for those that drink coffee, the pots and pans out to cook breakfast, and, but everything else, you know, I'll kind of like have it already stacked up. Yep. Um, I'm assuming the cook is keeping track of days worth of meal because I told you quantity in days. Yep, we've been on the road. For, this was our second day. Yep, you are now entering the third day. So I got three left. Are you guys going to push on ahead hard and try to catch up with that other group, or are you going to keep traveling and following the original plan? I thought we caught up with them fairly well because we just got lucky. You didn't catch up with them all the way because you were just going to try to push it for like an hour. You just made really good time that first push. Okay. All right. Let's try and catch up to them, but let's send somebody ahead of us so that way this big caravan of people doesn't just show up and kind of the same thing we did. Like, I'll hold the fuck up. Well, to do that, though, then we'd have to reconfigure the horses because right now we've got three They're all wagons okay. with being pulled by three, by two horses each. Well, let's... Do it to it then. Let's just catch up with them. We're all headed to the same place. Yo. I'll help break everything down. All right. You have your breakfast. You decide to push it hard during the day. You make pretty decent time. By the time it gets to nightfall, you feel like you could probably catch them. If you weren't so exhausted from pushing it all night long. So you know if you get a decent night's sleep tonight, come morning, you could catch them by noon. Decent night's sleep. Yeah. End, end of day three. Any conversations or anything anybody needs to have in that day? Any prepping, training? I'm going to find some twigs on the way as we go. Something I could like whittle some bolts for my crossbow for the ones that I lost. Okay. So you whittle. All right. End of day three. Make camp. First watch. Nada. Second watch. Very, very easy second watch. Always easy if you sleep through it. <laughs> Third watch goes off without a hitch. You are into day four. Mark off your food. You take a good pace, push the horses. By noon, you start coming up on this caravan. This caravan is two wagons side by side. Four wagons long. They have two horses per wagon. Then there's about eight mounted men in armor on horseback leading this, this caravan. As you guys approach, they're like riding at a slow pace and they have uh, people delivering food to the different wagons while they're, uh, while they're moving. And uh, who's who's head of the pack? What what? Who's the leader here? What wagon approaches first? I think I. I, our, I, I say our, <laughs> our wagon. Our, our wagon, wagon definitely yeah. approaches first. Okay, and who is driving said wagon? 
the half orc and Drake, the bard. All right, no, the half orc there. No, yeah, the bard would be better because that way we know we're going to meet him. We know we're going to need to talk, so we might as well put him in the front. That's right. Okay, so uh, a guy in full plate mail with a horse all decked out in barding rides up. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't get too close. You guys are like a hundred, about 200 yards from the caravan. My I'm name just is... just curious. He looks official? Yes. Before he gets... Okay. A militia man would recognize him as wearing like the armor of the higher, higher up guards. Like this guy would normally be guarding a noble as it tours from town to town. So he's, an, okay. he's a knight. I got nobility One and royalty. Do knight. I recognize his heraldry? Give me a roll. I did. It was 24. He is specifically of the Rye Cast Guard. You would recognize the heraldry of the Rye Cast even though you're not quite sure what being a member of the Rye Cast means. Okay. Uh, give him a standard proper greeting and then let him know our situation, what we heard. We have people with us. We have food, supplies. Well, he, he rides up. Halt, don't go no further. My name is Michael Dela Cruz. I am protectorate of this caravan, and who might you folks be? Give our grandioso introduction. The Darwin Brothers Squared, Drake and Cargan, and then let them know we've also have a uh, civilian family in tow. Ah, oh, you have shot. a militia man with you. Yeah. Let me speak yep. with them. Fuck. Shiny ass bastards. So we got a real fancy shiny ass coming up to us. Corgan, get ready. Hi and well, well met. I'm Drake of Longmire, former militia, quickly disbanded. We're just traveling these roads heading to Sap. We all heard the crier's calls, same as you, shiny ass. So that's all you have to say? Well, what more do you want me to say? The sky's red. The earth is shaking. The king says we have to leave. And here's your ass out here leading a well-fortified, well-planned out and thought out group head to sap. Almost if you've known a week or two early. Us common folk are just trying to get on the road and get on going. Now, the way I see it, we can work together or we can't. I think we should work together, though. He, he kind of looks over his shoulder when you mentioned the week or so early. He looks back. Your wagons can join up with your with ours as long as you keep that to yourselves. Yeah. Information's kind of slow getting down to us, Militia. Understandable. We wouldn't like to alarm the more common folk. And he kind of his eyes dart to the half ogre and to the or half orc and to the bard and then back at the military man. I will allow you to join our company as long as you swear that that information stays amongst your small group here. Are you willing what to vouch for them keeping their mouths shut? Soldier? Well, the way I see it, who knows is what who knows what these guys know. <clears throat> Jack and shit. And I don't feel like telling him anything anyways. Lead on, Captain. Wonderful, wonderful. Come join us. And he rides up ahead and he has some of the, the guys on horseback open up so you can file in. You uh, travel for the rest of the day with this group of soldiers. Is anyone doing anything specific? Trying to meet people, trying to mingle, talk. Each wagon carries like four people in it. Of the of the eight wagons, two of them are heavily armored and locked. You're not sure if it's supplies or people inside of them. 
it goes okay, i want to mingle i want to talk i want to like meet people for dinner and eat their food entertain tell stories make some coin all right yeah you check in and kind of you know just feel a term carouse with the uh <laughs> cookie wagon the chef cart if you will and if you add your supplies to theirs and divvy everything out then uh they'll add a little extra if you help with the uh food preparation duties to make sure that your wagons get choice pick as it were i can do that all right josh you said you were trying to learn new spells basically adding spells to your spell book right yep add new spells to the book god damn all right <laughs> yeah <laughs> You actually like start talking around to see if anyone from the from the uh, college survived, right? Mm -hmm. And in one of the wagons, you meet a woman, and she hears the college, and she just starts weeping and weeping. And you look at her like, "Oh, oh what's happening?" She's like, "My husband. He was coming from the college. He was supposed to meet me. I, I gathered all of his belongings here." but he didn't make it. He didn't make it. They came out of the woods. And like, as soon as she said they came out of the woods, somebody else like hushes her. And she's like, I'm sorry. The guards, they don't like talking about before we all met up. But my husband's gone. Maybe, maybe you could, maybe you could use some of these things. And she passes you a backpack. And inside of it, Pick two spells that are not in your spell book, and there are scrolls that you could scribe into your spell book. How powerful was her husband? He was a fifth level caster when he made these scrolls. Yeah, you're a dick. You cut it off at purpose. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Hell yeah. And, uh, Thank and, you. And, I really appreciate it. And I will. Uh... Uh, and then I'll say there's two first level spells. Go ahead and pick them, and one second level spell. All right. All right. Who's next? I'm thinking that I'm going to stay on the wagon with Cargon. Maybe get a little, little drunk on all that ale we got back there. Kind of showing it off a little bit, but not getting hammered because now we're in line with the, the wagons. Mm -hmm. yeah, the horses will follow them. We ain't got to do so much driving now. Are you are you sharing it with any of the new wagons? No. Make it friends? No. All right. Um, but I'm waiting to hear, you know, when when my friends go out and about and mingle and things like that, I ask them to ask a couple of questions so this way I get some information about what's happening around. Gotcha. I hate to burst his bubble, but while I'm mingling, I'm totally bringing people back to our like thing to like share alcohol with them because that's what I do. Our place <laughs> is the party place. Drunk lips speak more. All right. That's pretty much everyone except Darla then, right? Or Cargon, did you have anything extra to add? Oh, I'm pretty much trying to keep to myself and not scare everyone else too badly. Gotcha. Darla, go. All right, so initially my first thought was under the guise of talking to the children because children hear things that adults don't think they can hear. Talking to the children, making nice with them, seeing like what they've got to say about like what they've overheard or any secrets that they have to tell. Um, while I'm doing that, I will also be listening in on the nights and finding out who's in charge and next in line. Okay, so the first thing that you notice is it's really fucking creepy. There are no children. Everyone that's in this group is in their, like, mid-30s to early 40s. And they have no kids. Yeah, there's no kids in this group. Lucky bastards. Join <laughs> Um, and, and there's a bunch of locked wagons, like wagons that are locked and whatnot. Yes, there are two like armored stagecoaches, like they're armored wagons. You can't see into them. They're padlocked. 
iron bars, keeping them shut. We're, we are robbing these people. You I'm are sorry, not breaking sure. character. Breaking <laughs> character. Time out. We are about to murder all of these people. <laughs> You're not sure if oh, oh, they're caught. designed to keep things out or to keep other people in. Like, that's with the way she I'm, plays. I'm, we're robbing and murdering these people. <laughs> that's that's what I'm thinking. Like, I'm gonna take Jack with me while I'm walking. Use my walking Jack as like a uh, all right a ruse cover to listen in on some of these wagons and see if I can hear hey, anything inside. You try to listen in on the armored wagons and uh, roll me uh, roll me a listen. One clatters like the inside is full of a lot of metal. Either okay. the treasury or the armory. <laughs> right. You want uh, me to roll another listen? Yep. The other one? Yep. The other one seems to have a lot of grunting and groaning coming out of it. Like it's barely hearable, but there might be things inside. All right, and as I'm listening and walking Jack, I'm gonna like just kind of stay into the back, but see if I can hear what the guards are talking about. No one's really talking about anything. They're focused on the job. They're like, we need to get, <laughs> we need to get these supplies to the captain of the Baron's militia. Some of these guys actually talk down about the captain of the Baron's militia. Like, we're fucking Rye uh, cast protectorate. And we're going to have to take orders from a captain of a fucking militia. Like, they they believe their class to just be so outside of having to deal with this guy. But they're doing it because they have belief and trust and faith in the king. Every now and then, somebody will talk about, you know, well, what's the deepest anyone's ever been in the Lax Woods and come back? And like, people have only made it like five days in. People have gone like deeper, never came back. You hear about like giant spiders. You hear about like elementals. You, you, you hear about like savage, barbaric, cannibalistic elves. But they kind have a savage, a, barbaric, cannibalistic orc. <laughs> um, <laughs> but everyone has faith that the prophets steered the king in the right direction and that there is a kingdom that is conquerable on the other side of these woods. They believe that if they go west far enough, they will leave these woods, they will hit a land and eventually hit ocean to start trade with the north again. As long as they keep the mountains to the north and follow these woods, they they are they strongly believe that they're going to end up hitting a, a chunk of land that's habitable. Wait. So I go back and uh, motion to Drake that we need to go like. Come here. Come here. What? Hmm. Come here. What, what? What? Not party wagon. All right. I jump down, grab my glaive, put it across my shoulders, walk off. So it, we we like walk behind everybody. Okay. So listen, one wagon. That one. I point to the one that. Okay, first of all, what languages do you speak? I speak an ancient warrior language in common. You're not making this easy on me, huh? Okay. <laughs> so, in a whisper, I like crawl up his back <laughs> in, in his ear. I say, bat wagon, and I like motion to one. I'm like, Sounds like there's like weapons in that one or like some 
lots of clanging. That one, there's grunting in there. There's no kids in any of these wagons. There's no kids to be seen, found, or heard of. There's no children? There's no children at all. That is strange. I thought they were supposed to... Hmm. So, the militia are talking about how they don't trust the one guy, but they trust the king, but they don't know why they're following somebody that they shouldn't be following. Wait, and wait, 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 wait. You're telling me the captain of this is a militia man and not a knight of rye? Okay, that so... Could be, that could be used in our favor. Hmm. So Interesting. The guards are saying that they don't trust him because he's not one of them. He's somebody else. But they trust the king, and they trust the king's seers on what they did. And then other, the, a lot of the talk was going through the forest and how there's spiders and there's elves that eat people and there's all kinds of big nasties. But if you keep going through the forest, you can hit the ocean and they're, they, what they're trying to do is get trade with the north again. So they have a lead on land just through the outside of the forest. If that's the case... Then it would probably be smart that the king has already maybe sent boats that way. Hmm. I don't know. They just said that it's possible to make trade with the north again, but most people, when they go into the forest, they don't come out, and that there's all kinds of big bad nasties in there, like the cannibal elves. And I think we should definitely tell Corgon. Maybe his people know or have stories of the woods, and maybe the third. Maybe he has heard stories and things in his travel. So maybe we can be best prepared. Good job. Yeah, thanks. Good job. Now I'll go talk to uh, the third. If you want to go talk to Cargon. Hey, I climb down off of his back. When I run up, I put Jack in the... Back in the thing. And I go talk to... And I go to talk to Cargon. Cargon, do you got to pee? I got to pee. But I don't want to pee without anybody watching out for me. And Drake said he wouldn't watch out for me because he finds that kind of business disgusting. Yeah, right. no. You got to deal with that. I'm, I got to go talk to the third. You seen Junior? No. Oh. No. All right. I'm going to go see where they're at. Third, as I kind of holler off as I move into the the caravan area. Hey, hey, dude, that uh, Drake's Drake's calling you, their little brother. But I swear, I just saw a couple of people I knew that uh, they had business with the school, but they're way, 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 way above my pay grade to go run up and try and talk to. I wonder if that has anything to do with like most people here apparently uh, are researchers, study things, scholars. I kind of got that idea off of the books and everything that that guy's wife gave me. I did a little bit of reading in his journals. They do a little bit of research. I can't really pinpoint what they're researching or what they're doing, but I don't think you're wrong. Um, I'll let Junior and Drake know that. Um, both about the protectorate guy and then also the same thing about they're not, they're researchers. Scholars studying something, all kinds of things, actually, from what I can tell. I don't think this is, like, just a normal caravan of, like, nobles trying to escape. And I'm also getting the feeling that, like, whatever's locked in there isn't, like, just normal treasure. It might not be, like, treasure at all. Or I'm sure it's treasure to somebody, but 
not like in the kind that we could just like nab and fence with the quickness. Just by two cents. This is just the two uh, brothers having this conversation, right? Well, you're exactly. walking up. Oh, and you. I'm walk- yeah, you're okay, walking up. Walk- yeah. You right, walk up like mid-conversation. Well, you're looking for him, and I said, hey, he's calling for you. All right. You mean to tell me, so what Darla found was true. Uh, there's no kids. It would make sense if re- researchers, though. Damn, more mages like you over there, Junior. Okay. They got any of that magic shit written on them carts, them wagons? Yeah, Junior, were they really any kind of mages? Because at least my question in like mages and magic didn't really come up. This seemed yes. like they, they weren't more they, they mundane business. research. Yeah, they did business with the school. They weren't uh they weren't necessarily mages i've never seen them in a class or anything like that i always talk seen them talking to the higher ups and exchanging things and <coughs> so were, were they like ad- ad- administrators like spell components like, and stuff i didn't get to see what they i don't know i have no idea we can go find out though i think we should buy some time i mean what are we gonna do ask them? Well, say again, Drake, you're really quiet. I say we need to, we should buy some time, find out more about them. She found, um, Carla found out that the captain of this squad is actually a militia man. I don't know how that could happen, being them the gray knights and all, rye knights, yeah, shiny assholes. There's something definitely strange about this. What was that? I know you got... Go ahead. Keep, no, keep going. Sorry. Don't hit me, Drake. I apologize. Um, and we got to find out what's in them wagons. If they're just kicking us off our land to do something stupid, because they've already done something stupid, yeah. Drake Longmire's not going to be a part of it. There's an earthquake as you guys are talking, just a small one. I agree with you, but if they were really kicking us off our land to do experiments, wouldn't they be headed the other way? I'm not a wise man. I just try to put the pieces that I find together. I don't know. I do say, though, we keep moving forward, because if this land's doomed... We got to get out of here. Well, I'm not going to deny that. It's, they seem weird. Is there any other caravan, like, joiners like us? Or is it, they all seem like they're one group? Um, No, this looks like it's one group. There looks like there was no one, like, you. you've traveled throughout the day with them at this point doing all your sneaky shit, learning your shit, and you're having your conversation now as you're starting to set up camp for the night kind of deal. Um, They did what they're doing, what you guys were doing by pushing a couple extra hours. So you're you're setting up camp a little bit later. Um, You don't see any lights ahead of them. You do see lights behind you, but they're a long way back, and it's going to take those guys a long time to catch up. Um, I'm gonna make are a. Do you five are five days halfway. Five days into a fourteen day trip, so you are okay. a third of the way. I say we we hang with the lot. Maybe three, four more days. The closer we get the sap, the closer we get into you know more heavily wooded area. So this way, if we need to break off from these weirdos, we can. Or if we need to take care of them, we can. Well, the we nice thing think. is, you don't have to uh, worry about watch because the protector is 
that takes care of all of the watch, and none of you are. <laughs> We're still keeping watch. <laughs> There's still a fire guard. It's gonna happen. <laughs> all right. Oh, we'll be glad to do our share. On our, our wagon. Um. Oh, and and during the day's travel, as you guys are spying on them and, and telling them all this stuff, uh, Bob pretty much tells you that him, the two remaining Daryls, his wife and their kid, are with you guys. Whatever you do, they, they are following you. So, if you decide to break off from them, they would break off with you. Right. Not only do we have to get away from these guys, we gotta sneak away from Bob and his family too. <laughs> Damn it. Damn um, it. His family's got days worth of meat. And really boy, meat behind. <laughs> that what Darla was saying though, we've got a blacksmith too, though. So that's always a handy skill to have. Right. Bob and his family seem handy. And they be got so- they got super special healing powers. Yeah. And, and their, that kid, too. their kid, we got to keep a close eye on their kid because none of these people have kids. And I think they kill their kids and feed them to the thing that's in that other wagon that's grunting in there. Yeah, Drake don't do killing kids. I'm going to be completely honest, Darla. That thought totally has crossed my mind. And, and the kid, he's got a thing for herbology, even though his mom wants him to be a blacksmith. So he might make stuff. I'm an alchemist, so uh, I could teach him. That's understandable. My mom wanted me to be a wizard too, and I turned out an alcoholic. So, <laughs> but but yeah. So I w- I would have told Cargon about like the things in the woods that they're talking about, and I would have told him everything I told Drake just to keep him in the in the loop when he took me to pee that I didn't have to pee, but I just made up the fact that I had to pee. <laughs> No, when we first met Bob, he had his wife and his kid hiding. Uh, were they kind of hiding when we rolled up on this caravan? Or no, does the caravan they, know about the wife and kid? The caravan knows about the wife and kid just because like, they weren't hiding. They were just, they just stay in the wagon. So like when you guys and they closed in ranks behind your ra- wagon, the guys in the back saw the wife and the kid. So it's not so much that the wife and the kid were hiding. You also know that Bob is a farmer. His wife is a blacksmith. And like she said, the son talks about liking flowers and plants and herbs and all kinds of stuff. You get through the first night, all three watches, no problems whatsoever. Darla. Now, we're trying to figure out all these nifty little things about them. You want to do me a favor and keep an eye to make sure they're not learning nifty little things about us. Nobody else is doing that. I mean, you've got a party wagon over here. So you got all kinds of people coming. Yeah, yeah. So uh, now when you say party wagon, do you literally have people coming over while me and uh, Cargon are sitting there driving the, the horses or three, slowly drinking of those horses. barrels of ale. Well, I mean, like when we stop and take Clayton rest. Says there's like two or yeah. three, not a lot of them are partiers or drinkers. Well, cool. Them's the ones with loose lips. And when I mean I'm bringing them over to party, what I really mean is I'm bringing them over there to get drunk and pump them for information. That's that's what I mean by party. Ooh, ooh, ooh. We yeah. can poison them and blame it on bad food. I totally thought about poisoning them for like dinner and just poisoning all of them. But at the same time, I don't have access to that much poison. And then also I don't have access to like any poison. So well, what about, okay, can you make them have diarrhea from the food that you cook? Can you I- like food? Like, can you do that? And then with a sleep spell on top of some of the ones that are already sleep in, I'm pretty sure Darla can drop we a can. few quietly and then me and Cargon can come through in like a fucking crazy. Wait, 
wait, yeah, I got an idea. I got an idea. We don't want to kill them yet because they're actually doing a pretty good job at keeping us protected. But what we could do is make them all fall asleep, like you said, and then we could get the keys to the things and find out what is they're so guarding. Except for the one grunty wagon, because the one grunty wagon, it could be a monster. Maybe we should just burn that wagon. <laughs> but it might be the kids. So it could be kids or it could be monsters. Hmm. Isn't that kind of like six of one thing, half dozen of the other? <laughs> but if it's kids, what if it's their seers? Their seers or their children. See, there's all kinds of things. Big brain. Big brain. All right. So you're traveling and this is the sixth day. Um, you're, you're, you're getting close to that halfway point and you're getting into the woods and no sooner it's like two o'clock in the afternoon. No sooner do you pass over into that wood line. Do you hear, um, somebody yell out in Elvin, anyone who knows Elvin, um, he's just saying two arms. You see those eight. Uh, people in all the regalia and armor that are on their own horses charge down the trail a little bit. Anyone going to get interested and try to... Because you're in yep. a wagon at the back of a line. So, like, you're going to have to... Like, Did the wagon stop? Hey, they just all said to arms and took off. Yes, the wagon so, stopped. Okay, I so, tell them... I t Well, do, do any of you know what that said? Yeah, none I know, you know Elvin. No, none of you know Elvin. I know they I know yelled Elvin. something and took the fuck off. They yeah. said two arms. Does that mean Yo, they're, they have two arms? I have two arms. <laughs> two is it two arms or is it <laughs> two arms? Uh, I think we should. All right, man. I need um. So give me some visual representation here. Give me a theater of the mind of how the wagons are set up and where we're at in this line. All right, the wagons are side by side, four deep, and then there is your wagon side by side with Bob's wagon, with with Daryl's wagon behind his. So you would have to run up four wagons to be able to see what's going on up there, where all the men on horseback took off to. All right, what's what's to my left and right? To your right is um, a overgrown, like it's a forest. It's not super thick. You can't get the wagon through it, but there's definitely no trail. And to the left is a spattering of trees, but not quite all the way into the woods yet. Uh, is the Dick. Are we on the right side or left side of the road? You're taking up the entire trail. Because the wagon. No, no, we're, we're two side. wagons. Are we the left side, left you are wagon, the left or right side wagon? Left side wagon. Okay. Um, now I know where we're at. So it's if I cut, if I left. jump off the left into the trees, I can't run through and get a good look farther down to see what's going on, right? Instead of running the length, jump off and then run at an angle just slightly out. Okay. Um, roll me a spot. You go into the sparks trees and try to get a good angle to see what's being seen. Come on. What? What? <laughs> I can't swing to hit shit, but I'm I have no bonus and I roll gnats. All right. So these eight guys on horseback are using spears one handed. And shields in the other hand. And some of their spears are like burning as they're stabbing. And some of them are crackling. And there's like four or five dire wolves that are just getting fucking fucked up and trampled by these guards like they're nothing. And you have like the clearest view ever. You see that the one guy that's like the leader, the guy that gave you his name, Marcus, whatever. He's not as good as his men. 
he more like stands back and points and every now and then stabs but he does so to make more of a show of himself than actually like engage in combat this was the former militia protector guy right all right just to be clear because you have uh, the floating information which is hilarious <laughs> um the guy that claimed to be the protectorate of the Rye is the one you believe she was saying was a former militia captain? Yes. Okay, then that is what you believe. Yes, this, we are talking about the same guy. Yeah, they have everything full well in hand. Oh, yeah. He's... Like, uh, they how long make... are they gone? Yeah, so how uh, many people are back here guarding all these wagons while they're up there doing that thing? Uh, the eight guys on horseback are up there doing their thing. It probably takes them like a whole four minutes to dispatch these wolves. You got four minutes. What are you guys doing? He's watching the whole thing happen. He yells, they're fighting wolves. What do you four do? Darling, you do what you do. I'll be look out. I take I Jack with first. me and I take Jack with me and go back up to the care like and go back up to the caravan that I heard the grunting in. Okay. And try to talk to it. Okay. Um, I mean, what do you want me to roll? Um, let's roll a listen to see what if you hear the uh, a response. Hey, is someone in there? There's like tapping on the side, and you hear something that kind of sounds like a high pitched screech, and then like some grunting. All right, so I say in, I'm just going Gumbles. through all, I'm going through all my languages. Okay, next. What language? Uh, give me a minute. All right, so Elvin. Nothing. Same, same kind of response. Gnomish. Same kind of response. Goblin. The cart starts rocking. And it's like banging on the side, like something inside wants to kill you, and it wants to rip out of this cart to do so. Halfling. It's still banging on the cart, and the cart is rocking. And now some guys are starting to come out to investigate why the cart is rocking so much. I need to run away. <laughs> um... they, they literally step out and watch you run away. Because you yeah. didn't stop at the first language, you talk to it again. You notice the guy looking at you, and you just run away. And he looks very confused. But she's walking her goat, so I'm walking my goat, and then I hear the screeching from this wagon, so I run away. Uh huh. You run away, so you're not looking back. You don't see what it does, but uh, you hear like the commotion stop as you get like a wagon and a half away. Okay. All right, next. Anyone else doing wait, anything? Wait, wait, wait. I have to talk. I have to talk to Cargon for a second. All right. What hates goblins so much that it would go nuts that they need and it would need to be chained up? <laughs> Darwin? Uh, lots of things hate goblins. Like so much that it would go crazy in the wagon. What kind of screeching noises did it make? I do my best impression, quietly-ish, <laughs> of the screeching noises I heard. Like, I have you it. ever heard an owl? Anyone with uh, knowledge nature, give me, a, give me a roll with her impression. The noise reminds you almost of, like, insectoid, possibly, like, a burrowing insect. It's some sort of burrowing insect, you guys. Not sure what, but... Why would they keep it chained up in a thing? Because otherwise it would burrow out the bottom of the wagon. That's why it's a metal wagon. But why would they need it? They're weird, freaky experiments. So the four minutes go by, no one's doing anything else. Drake, you start to come back. Yeah, the riders have it in the bag. You get back to them. The riders come back. They're all very pleased with themselves. And the wagons keep moving. 
car gun. You might have a bigger problem than I thought. They're carrying shock lances, spears, flame heads. They got some nasty arsenal. This might be different, more difficult than I thought. You shouldn't try it. Let's watch them for a couple more days. How it goes. Anything okay. shady. And we need Let's to see if they it. feed whatever it is inside there. Now you all think it's some kind of insectoid in there, right? Yep. Well, he said we're fighting where we're going. There's giant spiders. Maybe this thing's a natural predator. I don't know. That's not a bad guess. Big goddamn praying mantis. Was it was it more of a chittering noise or was it a scream? It was like a scratching with a and I just repeat the noise again. And it like scratched. A screech. When, like a screech. And when I talked to it in human, it was fine. And when I talked to it in Elven, it was fine. And when I talked to it in um, nor in all the languages, it was fine. But when I talked to it in Goblin, it screeched and it got very angry and the heart started shaking and I ran away with Jack. So this was this took place midday through the sixth day. Um, you you watch their cycle, which guards swap out when you get to know their routine. You get to see, you know, okay, this is when they get their meals. You clock the entire joint for the next three days. You just travel with them. Yeah, everything seems to be about research. Everything seems to be about trying to learn all they can as they get through the wet woods, trying to find, you know, new cures to ailments. We're going to leave off, we'll say 10 days on the 10th day, the night of the 10th day. And anything you guys want to do to fill up those uh, four days, we'll fill up on the next session. Sounds All good. Right? Uh, All I right. like it. That was my first Fantasy Grounds recorded Zoom game ever. I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I hope all you guys enjoyed it. And I hope you come back when we do it again. Find out what's in the box. See where they're going. What's in the box? What's in the box? box. It's what's in the box. Uh, uh, uh.